Hello all. Today we are going to learn about a topic which is relevant to our current scenarios like something which is related to habitat and niche. As it is very important to learn about ecology and habitat and niche, resource partitioning and character displacement. In this video we are going to learn about all these topics one by one. So if we start with the concept of habitat and niche. The habitat of an organism is the place where it lives or the place where one would go to find it. The ecological niche is the position or status of an organism within its community and ecosystem resulting from the organism's structural adaptations, physiological responses and specific behavior, inherited or learned behavior. The ecological niche of an organism depends not only on where it lives but also on what it does. This the habitat and the, the we are going to cite an example. Example, this is the habitat of the water Paxkimar Noto Nekta is a shallow vegetarian chalked areas vegetation chalked areas like littoral zone of ponds and lakes that is where one would go to collect this particular organism. Habitat may also refer to the place occupied by all entire community for example the habitat of the sand sage grassland communities the series of ridges of sandy soil occurring along the north sides of rivers in the southern great plains regions of the united states charles elton in the england was one of the first to begin using the term niche in the sense of functional status of an organism and its community a habitat is where an organism or a community or organisms lives and a niche is a specific place an organism has in an ecosystem. A habitat can also help define the niche of a particular creature but cannot describe it entirely. A habitat can range in size from a host creature where parasites live to a grove of trees or a pond to things much larger. They must provide the organisms that live there with what they need to survive such as food, water, oxygen and minerals. If the habitat provides these things to the organisms that live there, those creatures will stay on the habitat. If these needs are not met, however, the organisms that live there will move elsewhere. A niche on the other hand reflects an organism's behavior and the variables like wind or temperature that affect those behaviors. Evolution helps species adapt over time until it evolves to successfully fill a, place, fill a place within a certain environment. Some species evolve so well, however, it, that it may no longer be suited to another environment. It is also possible for similar environments to help similar species evolve that do not live close together. For example, cattle in North America and wild beasts in Ameri Africa are similar because they evolve in similar niches in their environments. Next topic is the ecological niche width and overlap. Ecological niche, the term was first used by Grinnell in 1971. It is defined as the ultimate distribution until with which each species is held by its structural and instinctive limitations. No species, no two species can occupy the same niche. It is not to be confused with habitat. Habitat of an organism is the place where it lives, some physical area. It may be as long as a, as big as a sea or in the intestine of a termite. Ecological niche is the sum total of organisms use of biotic and abiotic abiotic resources in an environment. It includes space utilization, food consumption, temperature range and moisture requirements. Space utilization, food consumption and temperature range and moisture requirements. In simple terms, when we compare niche with habitat, we find that niche is like an occupation, occupation that an organism does. Habitat, on the other hand, is like an address where an organism lives. The difference can be explained through the example of wall lizard, whose three species are found in the large trees, like Hemidactylus brookeri is found in houses, while Hemidactylus reticularis is found in rocks. Ecological niche is of much importance as it explains the difference between species that are at the same space or at different places. A niche is a unique functional role or place of a species in an ecosystem. It is a description of all the biological, physical and chemical factors that a species needs to survive.
stay healthy and also to reproduce a niche is unique for a species which means no two species have exact individual niches niches plays an important role in conservation of organisms if we have to conserve species it is native in its native habitat we should have knowledge about the niche requirements of the organism and should ensure that all requirements of its niche are fulfilled next let's learn about the types of niche first one is the habitat niche habitat niche habitat niche where it lives food niche what it eats or decomposes what species it competes with reproductive niche how and when it reproduces physical and chemical niche temperature land shape land slope humidity and other requirements the term niche was for the first time used by J Grinnell in 1971 to explain microhabitat according to him niche to him niche is the ultimate distributional unit within which e- within which each species is held by its structural and instinctive limitations no two species in the same general territory can occupy for a long identically the same ecological niche ecological niche of any organism concerns not only the space it loves but also what it does how it transforms energy behaves responds to the and environment and modifies the physical and biotic environment and how it is constrained by other species next is a spatial or habitat niche it concerns the physical space occupied by an organism one good example is a spatial niche is provided by the distribution of seven species of millipedes in forest floor or a maple oak tree the seven species occur in the same general habitat forest floor hence all belong to the same basic trophic level as like all are decomposes in their role as tissues but if you go on in search of a particular millipede species you shall have to examine with different layers of the forest floor since they all occur in a same general habitat in some functional role one would naturally expect to find the species at every point in forest floor but it is hardly true each species of millipede indeed predominates in its own specific different microhabitat there are different gradients and decomposition states from the central center of the log to the position underneath the leaf litter and these gradients constitute distinct microhabitats in the same general habitat the forest floor next is the trophic niche it is concerned with the trophic position of an organism there are several interesting examples that explain the concept of trophic niche and one of such areas is the occurrence of various species of birds in galapagos islands in south america the various birds belong to three genera like ground finches tree finches and warbler finch these all live in the same geological or general habitat but differ in terms of their trophic positions even in tree finches one of these species is like a parrot like beak and uh, is basically vegetarian feeding on birds and fruits rest of the tree finches are insect eaters three of which feed on insects of distinct sizes other species insects in mangrove swamps the most interesting is a woodpecker finch which climbs tree in search of insects in the cracks of bark although it has woodpecking beak it lacks the long extensile trunk of a woodpecker the ground finches also occupy different trophic niches normally occupied by other birds this species are seed eaters though differ in choices of seed types and have different types of beak the ecological niche of an organism is the position it fills in the environment comprising the condition whether it is found the resources it utilizes and the time it occurs there the same species often occupies occupies somewhat different niche in different regions depending on the local community organization within the same taxonomic groups such as the genus or family the species often show a similarity in niche relations as much we expected from there similar morphological adaptations but they almost never actually occupy the same niche in the same habitat next topic is the types of niche habitat niche which we have just studied and uh, that's enough
we have learned about the types of niche the various as- aspects of niche can be described as spatial or habitat niche it is have concerned with the physical area occupied by the organism physical space occupied by an organism next trophic niche it is related to the trophic position of an organism for example two aquatic bugs notonecta and coxi corixa live in the pond but cannot be different tropical positions on one hand notonecta is a predator while corixa feeds on decaying matter but both this are two aquatic bugs next multifactor niche niche is a multidimensional considering so many biotic and abiotic factors so which are the types which we just consider them like spatial is there spatial niche next trophic niche trophic niche then third one that is a multi factor multi factor niche okay so fundamental and realized niche next major topic is a fundamental and realized realized niche interspecific competition occurs when two different species attempt to utilize the same resource and there is not enough of the resource for both species as a result some species are not able to occupy their entire niche because of the presence or absence of the other species observation of this phenomenon in nature has led to the concepts of fundamental and realized niches fundamental niche the set of resources about population is theoretically capable of using under ideal conditions fundamental niche or pre competitive niche is the range of environmental conditions in which a particular species can live this means it defines a collection of conditions and sources in which the species can survive grow and reproduce it means a collection of conditions and resources in which the species can survive grow and reproduce maximum advantage is taken by the organism and the species of the biotic and abiotic factors in the ecosystem of the fundamental niche since there is no competition or resources and predators the organism and the species can take the maximum advantage of both biotic and abiotic factors in the ecosystem of the fundamental niche since there is no competition for resources and predators as an example the male red winged blackbird holds the prime real estate in the marshes in the early spring However in the seasonal progress tricolor blackbirds which are more aggressive move to the marshes and take over the best territory hence before the arrival of the tricolor blackbird the marshes are the fundamental niches for male red winged blackbird blood so when we just look at the representation of a graph like prey site is there on the y axis temperature on the x axis like we will be representing a circle that is a fundamental niche inside of that fundamental niche circle we just put another small cycle or ring that is termed realized niche why is that realized niche is so small because due to the predators and all those limiting factors as we have learned fundamental niche is a theoretical concept or an ideal state where the organism is not experiencing any sort of predation it is not you know facing any sort of um, limiting factor but it's just an ideal concept a theoretical concept but in reality actual reality we just see organisms living in a realized niche where there are limiting factors like resource can be limiting or the presence of predators or the presence of competitors whatever it may be these factors act as limiting factors and so the organism just restricts itself into a realized niche and in case of fundamental niche the organism just survive survive and grow survive survive and grow and reproduce and just live like that its performance is increasing in according to temperature next is the realized niche like when we just represent temperature on x axis and performance on the y axis we just get like get a bell shaped curve where we are representing fundamental niche and in the top portion there is survive grow and reproduce on the both left and right side there is survive and grow then on the lower side there is survive next is realized niche the 
resources a population actually uses realized niche or post competition post competitive niche is the range of environmental conditions in which the species actually live it is always smaller than the corresponding fundamental niche of the species and is considered as a subset of the fundamental niche and the species and the fundamental niche have to face various interactions and pressures from the environment it is forced to move into small area or small niche and realized niche so it is considered that with the growth of the realized niche the corresponding fundamental niche also grows accordingly as an example wolves ranged wolves range across north america competing with coyotes for food and territory with the arrival of european settlers to the continent the hunting reduced the wolf population letting coyotes enjoy a wide range of environment differences and similarities fundamental niche and realized reach are two types of positions of the ecosystem occupied by a particular species fundamental niche refers to a niche of an organism given that there are no limiting factors on the environment or resources the organism can use while a realized niche refers to a niche a uh, viable population of a sample occupies in the presence of competitor species this explains the basic difference between fundamental niche and realized niche fundamental niche is a type of theoretical niche while a realized niche is where the species actually lives in the fundamental niche there is no environmental pressure when pressure from predators or restricted resources develop the sh- species shifts to the realized niche Sometimes the fundamental niche can be of the same size as a realized niche depending on the rivals and predators present the same species living in various areas may have different realized niches fundamental species i'm sorry fundamental niche narrows when other species or organisms arrive and there is strong competition for food and breeding pa- partner or when predators start hunting in the area on the other hand the organism will survive if adapt to the new conditions of its realized niche both fundamental and realized niche can be wide or narrow the terms used for organisms that live in narrow niches because they thrive only in certain environmental conditions or eat a certain food as a specialized species specialist the term used for organisms that live in narrow niches because they thrive only in certain environmental conditions or eat a certain food is a specialist species whereas the term used for species that occupy wide niches wide niches and make use of a variety of resources and can live in many different environmental conditions is a generalist species when a tadpole which is an herbivore undergoes metamorphosis into a carnivorous frog Furthermore, the fundamental niche is a large in size while the realized niche is small in size. There is no competition in a fundamental niche either for resources or predators while a competition occurs for both resources and predators in a realized niche. This is an important difference between fundamental and realized niche. The realized niche can be smaller than the fundamental niche because of interspecific interactions such as competition and predation. This has been explained by Joseph Crinnell's famous experiments. two species of barnacles live in a stratified distribution of the intertidal region along the scottish coast banana belanus is most concentrated in the lower intertidal area cathalmus is most concentrated in the upper intertidal area the free swimming larvae of each species can settle anywhere in the shock rocky shoreline and predominantly are able to grow to be an adult cornel removed cathalmus from the upper area and no belanus replaced it therefore it was inferred that belanus could not survive in an area that experienced so much desiccation due to low tides belanus realized in each was the same as its fundamental niche when cornel removed belanus from a lower area and cathalmus replaced cathalmus Cathalmus less. Cathalmus replaced it. It was inferred that Belanus was the most successful competitor in the lower intertidal zone. This, the fundamental niche, and realized niche of Cathal Cathalmus. Cathalmus. I'm sorry for mispronouncing this. Cathalmus were not the same 
it's realized in age was smaller due to interspecific competition. Ecological equivalence. Organisms that occupy the same niche in different geographical regions are called eco ecological equivalence. Different types of grasses are grasses are found in various grasslands, but are all are primary producers. Similarly, kangaroos of Australia are ecological equivalents of antelopes of North America as both are graces. So that is ecological equivalence. Next major topic is the niche width and overlap. Niche overlap indicate competition between two species of similar resources. Niche overlap occurs when two organisms units use the same resources or other environmental variables. A niche overlap occurs when two species are sharing resources with each other. So niche overlap refers to the partial or complete sharing of resources or other ecological factors like predators, foraging space, soil type and so on by two or more species. For example, warblers in a woodlot might feed all feed on insects and thus overlap in their diets or plants in a meadow might all overlap in their need for light. Niche overlap is an important concept of community ecology because it is expected to determine how many and how much species can coexist in a community. Interact interest in a niche overlap begin with the competitive exclusion principle which states that no species using identical resources and or environment cannot coexist. Concept of niche width or niche breadth refers essentially to the diversity of resource use shown by any one organism or a group of organisms. Those whose resources use is restricted to a small portion of the available resource spectrum are considered to have a narrow niches. Narrow niches. Those which exploit a relatively diverse set of resources within the resource continuum are defined as broad niches. Broad niches. Competitive exclusion principle. So narrow niche is there and broad niche is there. Methods of estimating population density of animals. Uh, that is something which we learn after some times. So let's have a quick recap about niche width and overlap. The niche width of an organism refers to the theoretical range of conditions that a species could inhabit and successfully survive and reproduce with no competition. This is a theoretical range underlying theoretical that is very essential and important range of conditions that a species could inhabit and successfully survive and reproduce with no competition the niche width is defined as the parameters of this range which are determined by biotic and abiotic factors such as appropriate food sources and suitable climate respectively the niche width often differs from the area that a species actually inhabits with the area a species actually persists and refers to as its generalized niche width. This is due to interspecific competition with other species within their ecosystem and other biotic and abiotic limiting factors. Interspecific competition is reason and other abiotic and biotic limiting factors. A species realized niche is usually much narrower than its theoretical niche width as it is forced to adapt to its niche around superior competing species. The physical area where the species lives is its habitat. The abstract hypercube that defines the limits of environmental features essential to that species survival is its niche. Niche overlap occurs when two organisms, organismic units, use the same resources or other environmental variables. Overlap is complete when two organismic units have identical niches. There is no overlap if two niches are completely dis disparate. Usually niches overlap only partially with some resources being shared and others being usually exclusively used by each organismic unit. There is no competition or prey between the extreme left and extreme right species while for the broader distribution niche overlap indicates competition can occur between all species. The resource utilization approach consists in postulating that not only competition can occur but also that it does occur and that overlap in resource utilization directly enables the estimation of the competition 
coefficients. This hostility, however, can be misguided as it ignores the impact that the resources of each category have on the organism and the impact that an organism has on resource of each category. For instance, resource in the overlap region can be non-limiting and in which case there is no competition for the resource despite niche overlap. So there are three species eat some of the same prey a statistical picture of each niche showing overlap in species usage between three species indicating where competition is stronger utilization is there on the y-axis prey categories on the x-axis then and there is bell-shaped curves but they do overlap with each other overlapping is happening that is niche overlap Next, resource partition. Resource partitioning refers to the division of resources to avoid interspecific competition for limited resources in an ecosystem. It is an evolutionary adaptation that helps various species coexist in an ecological community. Resource partitioning studies help in determining the effect of the addition or removal of a species in a particular habitat and the functioning of an ecosystem. Resource partitioning is a phenomenon where two or more species divides out resources like food, space, resting sites, etc. to coexist. For example, some lizard species appear to coexist because they consume insects of different sizes. Alternatively, species can coexist on the same resource if each species is limited by different resources or differently able to capture resources. Different types of phytoplankton can coexist when different species are differently limited to nitrogen, phosphorus, silicon and light. In the Galapagos Islands, finches with small beaks are more able to consume small seeds and finches with large beaks are more able to consume large seeds. If a species diversity declines, then the food is most depends on will become more abundant since there is no there are so individuals to consume it. As a result, the remaining individuals remaining individuals will experience less competition for food. Although resource generally refers to food, species can partition other known consumable objects such as parts of the habitat. Parts of the habitat also there is something which is partitioned. For example, warblers are thought to coexist because they nest in different parts of the trees. Species can also partition habitat in a way that gives them access to different types of resources. As states in the introduction, annual lizards appear to coexist because each uses different parts of the forest at perch locations. This likely gives them access to different species of insects. Next examples of resource partitioning. Resource partitioning helps in dividing limited resources so that different species utilize the different parts of a resource. Slightly different resources are the same resource at different times or at different places in order to meet their requirement. Next first term is the habitat partitioning. It refers to occupy different microhabitats within a habitat to reduce competition or resource by different species. Different annual lizard species found in the islands of Puerto Rico have similar requirements of food. They occupy different areas of habitat such as some live in the forest floors and some on the tree shrubs. Some live on the forest floors, some live on trees, shrubs, etc. This way resource partitioning helps in reducing interspecific competition and helps in their coexistence. Next, food partitioning. Different species may consume different parts of a food resource. Like some may eat the leaves or stem and some may eat fruits or nectar of plants. These different species coexist and are able to satisfy their needs from the limited resource present. Some species are active during the daytime and some are more active during the night. This, the resource partitioning helps in the coexistence of different species. Different species of bumblebees present in the mountains of Colorado are adapted to derive nectar from flowers of different species of plants based on the length of the corolla. The length of the proboscis of different species of bumblebee species in accordance with the corolla begins to facilitate nectar consumption. So, cite the example of bumblebees. 
Corolla and their Prabhu's length. Don't forget the stems. Therefore, resource partitioning helps in the coexistence of species in the same habitat. This explains how similar species survive the competition in an ecological niche and do not lead to extinction of the weaker species and uh, rich biodiversity is maintained in an ecosystem. Okay, then the process by which natural selection drives competing species into different patterns of resources is or different niches. Coexistence is obtained through differentiation of their realized ecological niches. A consequence of cause extinction competitive exclusion principle. If competition for a limited resource is intense, there are two possible outcomes which are the one species drives the other to extinction or natural selection reduces the competition between the species. Robert MacArthur of Princeton University did a famous study of the five species of warblers small insect eating songbirds in the late 1980s it appeared that they all were competing for the same resource on spruce trees the clo on closer in, in the in inspection he realized the five species were each feeding on different parts of the tree and therefore eating different insects in essence each species had evolved to utilize a different portion of the spruce tree resource. They had subdivided the niche, partitioning the available resource to avoid different competition with one another. This process became known as the resource partitioning. This is known as resource partitioning. When species use different resources, this can help them to coexist. For example, some these are species appear to coexist because they consume insects of differing sizes. Alternatively, species can coexist on the same resource if each species is limited by different resources or differently able to capture resources. For example, different types of food, phytoplankton can coexist when different species are differently limited by nitrogen, phosphorus, silicon and light. In the Galapagos Islands, finches with small beaks are more able to consume small seeds and finches with large beaks are more able to consume large seeds. If a species diversity declines, then the food is it most depends on will become more abundant since there is no too few individuals to consume it. As a result, the remaining individuals will experience less competition for food. Although resources generally refer to food, species can partition, partition other non-consumable objects such as parts of the habitat too. For example, warblers are thought to coexist because they nest in different parts of a tree. Species can also partition habitats in a way that gives them access to different types of resources. As stated in the introduction, anomalous lizards appear to coexist because each of this uses different parts of forests of birds' locations. This likely gives them access to different species of insects. There are three types of partition resource utilization or partitioning, like temporal partitioning. First, what is the temporal partitioning? Temporal resource partitioning occurs when two species eliminate direct competition by utilizing the same resource at different times. Time difference. This can be on the daily scale or one species of spiny moose feeds on insects during the day while a second species of spiny moose feeds on the same insect at night on a longer seasonal scale. An instance of the latter would be reproductive asynchrony. Reproductive asynchrony or the division of resources by the separation of breeding periods. An example of reproductive asynchrony leads to division of resources by the separation of feeding periods would be as an example we have two competing species of frog of such breeding periods. By doing this the first species tadpoles will have graduate to different food resources with the time the tadpoles of the second species are hatching. Next is this spatial partitioning. Next is the spatial partitioning. Spatial 
resource partition occurs when two competing species use the same resource by occupying different areas or habitats within the range of occurrence of the resource. Spatial partitioning can occur at small scales like microhabitat differentiation or at large scales like geographical differentiation. Microhabitat differentiation occurs when two competing species with overlapping home ranges partition a resource. Two examples would be different species of fish feeding at different depths in a lake or different species of monkeys feeding at different heights in a tree. Geographical differentiation is when two competing species have known overlapping home ranges and this partition resources. An example might be given with monkeys again. Two competing species of monkey using the same spe species of fruit trees but in different areas of the forest. Now we are going to learn about the character displacement, a major topic related with the ecological perspective. Character displacement is a phenomenon whereas were differences among similar species whose distribution overlap geographically are attenuated in regions where the species co-occur but are minimized or lost where the species distributions do not overlap. This pattern results from evolutionary change driven by biological competition among species for a limited resource like food. The rational, the rational for character displacement stems from the competitive exclusion principle competition exclusion principle also called Gauss law which contends that to coexist in a stable environment two competing species must differ in their respective ecological niche without differentiation one species will eliminate or exclude the other to competition so brown and wilson viewed character displacement as a phenomenon involved in speciation stating we believe that it is a common concept of geographical speciation arising most often as a product of the genetic and ecological interaction of two or more newly evolved cognate species derived from some immediate parental species during their period of first contact while character displacement is important in various scenarios of speciation including adaptive radiations like the cichlid fish faunas in the rift lakes of east africa it also plays an important role in structuring communities it also plays a role in speciation by reinforcement of such allopatric population overlapping in sympatry exhibit greater trait divergence The result of numerous studies contribute evidence that character displacement often influences the evolution of resource acquisition among members of a ecological guild. Competitive release defined as the expansion of an ecological niche in the absence of a competitor is essentially the mirror image of character displacement. It too was described by Brown and Wilson. Two closely related species are distinct where they occur together, but where one member of the pair occurs alone, it converges toward the second even to the context of being nearly identical within some characters. This phenomenon is explained by Brown and Wilson by taking the example of two species of bird, nest birds, species that occur in different geographical regions or separated by a spatial barrier are said to be allopatric whereas those occurring in the same area but not necessarily the same niche are called sympatric in the sita birds two species are very similar in allopatry or allopatric they are allopatric these two species occur in different geographical regions and difficult to be distinguished from each other even by a bird taxonomist they are so similar so they are called allopatric allopatry there is a great amount of allopatry when they are located in different regions however when occurring together in the same region this two show sympatry like are sympatric as this two show striking divergence in morphology and can be easily distinguished at a glance just by looking at them we can distinguish them so that is sympatry don't get confused because the sympatry word is similar to similar but that's different okay 
similarity is something which is represented by the word allopatry okay in one species the bill and black facial stripe or pigmentation becomes enlarged while on the other bill and black facial stripe or pigmentation is enlarged while on the other its characters are reduced in size this divergence difference in bill size reduces food niche and overlap and the difference in facial stripe enhances species recognition and prevents interbreeding at or at least cuts down energy that might be wasted in unsuccessfully mating with wrong species similar example occurs among darwin finches darwin's finches on the galapagos islands who whose visit greatly influenced the development of hysteria and natural selection this character displacement has two adaptive values it enhances niche displacement thus reducing competition and then it enhances genetic segregation by maintaining species distinctiveness like preventing hybridization and main the by maintains a greater species diversity in the community so there will be an increase in genetic segregation increased genetic segregation prevents hybridization prevents hybridization prevents hybridization next there will be reducing competition competition is also decrease okay so that's it next next we will be explaining the same topic allopatry and sympatry allopatry means similarity but sympatry means difference brown and wilson in 1956 coined the term character displacement brown and wilson character displacement but the catalyst for the idea can be traced to the earlier discussed curves experiment of competitive exclusion exclusion they observed that there are two species of cetacea bird cetacea bird species that occur in, in different geographical regions and are said to be allopatric while those occurring in the same region are said to be sympatric the birds of the same region exhibited more morphological diversity as compared to the allopatric one this tendency for characteristics is to be divergent in sympatric populations of two species than in allopatric populations of the same two species is called character displacement ecological character displacement is a process of phenotypic differentiation this is a phenotypic differentiation of sympatric populations caused by the interspecific competition such differentiation could facilitate speciation by enhancing reproductive isolation between incipient species it has been studied patterns for morphological variation in sympatric and allopatric species populations of two hybridizing species of birds the common night tingale and the thrush night tingale night tingale species converge in overall body size and diverge in relative bill size uh, in sympatry closer analysis of morphological variation along geographical gradients reveal that the convergence in body size can be attributed largely to increasing body size with increasing latitude a phenomenon known as bergman's rule bergman's rule what is bergman's rule increasing body size with increasing latitude in contrast interspecific interactions contributed significantly to the observed divergence in relative bill size even after controlling after the effects of geographical gradients who suggested that he suggested that a divergence in bill size most likely reflects segregation of feeding niches between the species and sympatry interspecific competition for food resources can drive species divergence even in the face of ongoing hybridization such divergence may enhance reproductive isolation between the species and thus distribute to contribute to speciation interspecific competition for food resources can drive species divergence even in the face of ongoing hybridization such divergence may enhance the reproductive isolation between the species and thus contribute to speciation we need reproductive isolation reproductive isolation a comparison of a 
allopatric versus sympatric populations of specific species shown evolutionary evidence of competition in each example galapagos finches when two species occur on the same island they are sympatric populations they tend to exhibit greater difference in morphology exhibit greater differences in morphology shape of beak and resources used than when found on different islands like allopatric populations allopatric populations different when found in different islands like allopatric populations character displacement allows the two species to avoid competition they just try to avoid competition it can broadly be classified into ecological character displacement and reproductive character displacement ecological character displacement refers to trail evolution is stemming from selection to lessen resource competition between species and therefore add acts on traits associated with the resource use like morphological structures such as beaks and jaws next reproductive character displacement the reproductive character displacement is there so we have learned two types of character displacement first was the ecological character displacement next we will see reproductive character displacement refers to trait evolution stemming from selection to lessen sexual interaction between species and therefore acts on traits associated with reproduction sexual signals or female mate preference causes of character displacement communities of takes up taxa that are more prone to undergo character displacement will likely be more diverse that those communities or taxa where character displacement does not occur for at least two reasons first species that undergo character displacement are less likely to go extinct less likely underline less likely to go extinct through competitive or reproductive exclusion second character displacement may promote speciation and as a part of a more general theory of why some communities or taxa are more diverse than others it is important to determine what factors facilitate character displacement next factors that facilitate character displacement four non exclusive factors appear to facilitate character displacement and therefore make it more likely to unfold two are evolutionary factors strong selection disfavoring interactions with heterospecific and ecological opportunity the remaining two are proximate factors initial trait differences between species abundant standing variation although these factors facilitate adaptive evolution in general and are therefore not unique to character displacement first character displacement is more likely to occur when selection against interactions with heterospecific for specifics is strong for example reproductive character displacement is increasingly likely to occur as the costs of hybridization increase moreover difference between species in the strengths of selection to avoid interactions with the other species may explain asymmetric character displacement where one species diverges less than another species when one species suffers higher costs in the interaction it may experience greater divergence than the other species although asymmetric character displacement can occur for other reasons not described here character displacement should also be more likely to occur when the encounter rate between species is high and hence when selection disfavoring character interactions with heterospecific is strong second character displacement is facilitated by ecological opportunity the availability of different resource type utilized by different species although the concept of ecological opportunity has traditional been applied to resources a similar principle applies to having available signal space in the case of reproductive character displacement character displacement often generates new resource use character displacement often generates new resource use or reproductive traits in sympatry that differ from the pre displacement traits in allopatry therefore for character displacement to occur exploitable resources or signal space that are not already utilized by another species must be available
there must be resources or signal space onto which a species can actually be displaced displaced in the absence of exploitable resources or signal space competitive or reproductive exclusion may result third character displacement occurs most readily if interacting species already differ in phenotypic traits under selection when they come into contact with one another another character displacement can occur without such initial difference character displacement is facilitated if other factors jump start the divergence prior to interactions with hetero species such factors may act in allopatry before they two species come into contact with one another and they may include drift or spatially divergent natural or sexual selection such differences may then be amplified in symmetry by selection along the lesser interspecific interactions in the absence of initial differences between species one species will be more likely to drive the other locally extinct through competitive or reproductive exclusion this species that differ initially from hetero specific should be more prone to undergo character displacement finally character displacement may be more likely to occur when interacting species are phenotypically variable phenotypic variation is important because it increases the characters that character displacement can evolve through the selective filtering of divergent phenotypes in allopatry that were already present in allopatry indeed because this process should unfold relatively rapidly abundant standing variation should facilitate character displacement as opposed to competitive or reproductive exclusion this species with abundant standing variation should therefore be especially likely to undergo character displacement given that abundant standing variation might facilitate character displacement what evolutionary and developmental organisms generate such variation answering this question could explain why some populations are predisposed to undergo character displacement in the next session we discuss two such mechanisms first one is the interspecific competition intraspecific competition and phenotypic plasticity species with abundant standing variation should be especially prone to undergo character displacement therefore identifying the mechanisms that generate and maintain variation within natural populations is crucial for understanding the factors that facilitate character displacement one such mechanism is disruptive selection which arises when extreme phenotypes have a fitness advantage over more intermediate phenotypes consequences of character displacement character displacement can influence four key evolutionary process like correlated evolution sexual selection speciation and extinction by influencing how this process unfold character displacement has potentially far reached impacts beyond mere trail difference between species